Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanotti and I'm joined today by Harold Muliati. Jeff Lanchard could not make it today, so we are talking today about this beast. This is the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 IS image stabilization version 2. Here we go. And we are back in Harold. We got this in yesterday. It is the it's a venerable lens. This has been around for quite a while. This is the second version. There is a third version that came out, I think, this year, but it's not that different. In fact, if you have the version 2 versus the version 3, from what I'm hearing, there's not much difference at all. I think it's basically a slight change in, in the color, maybe a tad sharper, but everybody's saying not that much sharper, meaning you wouldn't notice it. And it shoots a little better when you're going into sunlight, but I kind of like the fact that this flares a bit, meaning I didn't want it to be so dead. Now, Harold, you've got the Tamron version of this, which I actually sold you. He, Carol mm -hmm. bought our 5DSR, and he also got the Tamron 70 to 200, which is a, also, I think, an f2.8. It's, a, it's an incredible lens, yeah, too. Yeah, that's a beautiful lens. Now, next week, we're going to try to get both of them in-house at the same time. We'll do some testing to see if we can see any differences between the two. Um, there's one big difference. The Tamron, I think, only costs like eight hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars. Maybe it was eleven $1 hundred. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was under a thousand. But I'm pretty sure that one new is like thirteen hundred. Is it that much? Okay. Yeah. I think I got a, a special one. I got it. I think we got one of those instant rebates at Sammy's. Mm -hmm. And this one is seventeen ninety nine. Not cheap. Um, but we got it with an instant three hundred dollar rebate as well, just this week. So I guess we're we're lucky. We didn't even know we had a rebate. Uh, we got th actually this we got from uh, Dell. We do a lot of work with Dell on computers, and they just happen to sell some cameras, and we had some credit, so we, we decided to get this. We get a lot of our stuff from Sammy's, Sammy's Camera in Los Angeles. We love them. They're great guys. If you ever need anything from Sammy's, call Larry Leiretana. Larry Leiretana, he is in lighting sales right now, but he'll sell you whatever you need in that store. Uh, good guy. We've known him for about 19 years now. It's great. So anyway, this this is a heavy lens. It weighs about three pounds, somewhere around there. It's got right now, it's not as big as it looks because this is a very large lens hood, but still big. It you know, Three pounds, the Canon EOS R is probably about three pounds as well with the, uh, the battery grip on it. Yeah, so it doesn't feel that different. With the uh, battery grip on the camera, it's actually fairly balanced. Like you're, mm -hmm. when, when you have that lens on, it's not feeling you know front loaded or back loaded. You don't feel you're, shaky, you're pretty, right? Um, so it's it's pretty good and stable when you're holding it. It does get a little bit heavy if you're holding it for a long time, but yeah. it's not too bad. It's <laughs> yeah. yeah, you will develop you will develop muscles and become muscle man with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, so we took some shots just to give you an idea of what this can do. And, and we mostly took shots at night, though we did take some earlier in during daylight or in the office. But these, these shots were taken with the EOS R. And one thing that surprised both Harold and I as we were doing these is we did not need to use very high ISO. So let's get into these. Um, so this one was afternoon, I believe. This was, this was as the sun was going down. This is your... Uh, gazebo over there and yeah let's and see I was about mm, almost a hundred feet away and uh, let's see I think we can zoom in on the here. and you can still get wood the Sun was going down there was no backlighting it was all well, at least on my end it was behind the bushes and trees over there so what light we were getting was still pretty much reflective from the, from the clouds if you will or the sky but there wasn't much other lighting there and let's go on to the next one. This is um, again. This this was about mm, five, about quarter to five in the afternoon. It still had not gotten totally dark. And again, handheld. Every shot you're seeing today was handheld. And this is a, I'm probably about seventy-five feet from this lamp, maybe a little further. 
and it if you notice the edges are very very sharp can you zoom in right on that lamp? Yeah, let me zoom in you can see that's pretty sharp handheld uh, I, I don't remember I think what you the property were at was one at one one twenty fifth of a second which yep. I mean at the distance you are at you know you can e you could easily get shake yeah that's that. barely enough to hold a camera especially a heavy one um, but it but it works that that usually stops any major ma major shaking but again at that distance on a zoom with a, with a stabilized lens I was pretty surprised at the detail quality and if you look behind look at the bokeh it's it's pretty clean everything's pretty blurry behind yeah, the it. background is just blown out mostly mm -hmm. you can s <coughs> I mean you can see that there's trees and sky above <coughs> but pretty good pretty good uh, let's go over to the next one this is in indoors you're taking pictures of some yep. of your lights over here and so again handheld pointing up uh, probably about 20 feet away 25 yeah. feet maybe it has pretty good focus um, it does a good job now here I don't think I was as probably dark as I could have been I think I was probably a little more open than what it really was in terms of lighting but it worked well the multi-function bar on the on this so for example uh, you probably can't see it now well let me uh, switch, just my switch back over to you so over here the camera has what's called the multi-function bar right where my finger is moving and what that does in the multifunction bar, we have it set to ISO or ISO. And as you slide it to the right, things get really bright. Could you put your finger over where it is again? Yeah. Just to so right, uh, I'm doing it backwards. Here it is. Wait. No, here that's it the, is. Yeah. Right here. So that's it right there. So as I slide this way, that makes it bright. If I go the other way to the left, that darkens it. And at first, I did not like the multifunction bar because we didn't have it turned on always. Now, when I'm holding the camera, my, f my thumb is not near this. A lot of people are claiming they're hitting it. Well, move your thumb. <laughs> it's pretty simple, actually. Um, so it's not that much of an issue because if I'm holding it normally like this, my thumb is near it but not on it. It's real easy to not to hit it. Um, but if you do have a problem, you could, you could force it to start when you hold it down, and then you can do this or that. Now, the nice thing about this is by just moving it this way, it's actually quicker than a dial. Yeah, it, it is very quick. And I think it does give you a, a, I think it gives you a moment where, you know, it's not, I don't think it scrolls it right away. So if you accidentally hit it and you realize, then you, you don't have to be changing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, but it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick once you, you're set to go always on. And once we did that, we started hating it less. Because yeah. it was sort of irritating before. You're, you're holding it like one, two seconds. Oh, there, there it goes. And then you take it off and it turns it off again. Wait, no, do it again. And it wasn't working. It's sort of a pain. But when you set it to always on, we've had no problem since. You could set it to three different things. We went for the ISO because there's no dedicated ISO button. Not really. Um, it would have been nice, but they didn't. You could program something to be an ISO button, but... You know, we didn't want to do that. You could. We'll, we'll probably do that later, maybe. So anyway, let's go back. So this is the backside of a house. It's got lights. Uh, again, this is pretty dark, I think, around this time. And yeah. uh, my ISO was what here? Do you remember? Um, I think it was 1,600. 1,600, it wasn't, right? It wasn't particularly high, I, no, if I recall. No. And the, I think we were at 1 25th of a second the whole time on shutter. And th we were wide open at f2.8 on the uh, on the lens. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see here, it, it cuts it cut the details pretty well. I think in some of the other ones, maybe it, it g the focus was a bit crisper. But yeah, this one you can still <coughs> see it. It's it's pretty. Um, it caught the stucco pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go over to the next one. We have this. Uh, lantern over here over your seagull palm yep now yeah, let's see let me zoom in on it actually now there the seagull's not too too bright there was another one i think was brighter i don't know if we yeah, have that one let's get over to that one oh, let's see uh this is another one of the wall yeah this one it i mean it caught the um Cut the details of the stucco and all that mm -hmm. pretty nicely. Let me zoom in here. 
yeah even and this is fairly low light i mean we this is dark it was it was dark outside with just I mean, these lights you can see it it's night but it yeah yeah it, it kind when of there's a well. light source it responds it does a good job so let's see let's and if you'll notice there's very there's no banding uh we will show you a sample of banding soon but there's no banding on any of these pictures that we were should we find. just go to that now no let's get there we'll get there we'll talk okay, about that as yeah. we get there and uh more of the side of the house um yeah let's see what do we have next here well this one here you can see you can kind of see the inside of the house and the outside at the same time yeah and yeah. and what you'll notice is this is a very sensitive lens it lets a lot of light in and the canon eos r is pretty good at night it it is sensitive. You don't have to go up that much in ISO. It's decent, yeah. Now, in this one, we are looking into the kitchen, right? Yes. Yeah. So, on this one, if he zooms in, I was about mm, 30, 40 feet from where I was shooting, handheld again. And it could get into the kitchen pretty well to show some detail. Mm-hmm. I think it was more focused on the window frame here, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and this is indoors. This is some of your lights. So there's a couple of areas. We have some cutouts and things that were came with the house. And uh, so those lights kind of give it a mall look, if you will. But they light up quite a bit heading up. It's almost like diffuse lighting, but except it's not covered. You can still see it depending on your angle. Mm-hmm. And this is your chandelier. Yeah, the, in the front entrance, this came with the house. And that's a pretty clear shot of it. Again, you're, you're seeing reflections in the chandelier. And the lines are straight. I'm handheld, and I've had to point up at it. It's amazingly stable. And you can see the bokeh. It, it really blew out the background mm -hmm. here. Pretty nice. Yeah, so for a portrait lens, th well, you'll see, I think we have some portraits coming up. Yeah, we will in a bit here. This is just your light sconce thing there at home. Yeah, now look at the first light, and then behind it, you'll see the other one is almost totally indistinguishable. It's so blown out. That's pretty nice. And we're getting this on handheld. Yeah, let's see, here's one of the portraits. A little scary. A little dark. Not too bad. So again, this is against a green screen, but we had it not too lit, so it wasn't too green. Um, we we're just doing some tests. Handheld again, totally handheld uh, in manual mode. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got one more. All right, and I think after this is the, um, we did, uh, Rick uh, cranked the ISO way up to show off, you know, people this was, people talk this about was banding 16, on this. 16,000. Yeah, this was 16,000 ISO. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how well it's actually showing up here. Let me see if I can zoom in if it'll show it more. But, yeah, I think you can see it towards the bottom there. You're st starting to see some banding. Banding, right? But, um, you know. Now if you go over the Seiko pump, if you zoom in on that part. Let me see. Let me just lower this. Again, this was pure night. It was about 7.30, 8 at night when we took these. And um, I was a good 100 feet away, may maybe more at this point. And handheld, that's not too bad. It, it could have been really blurry, but it was it's it's pretty passable. What do you think? Yeah, I mean we're getting grain, we're mm -hmm. starting to get banding, but you know it's it's and really that's high. At sixteen thousand. Yeah. It's so we're lighting up something that's almost pitch black without it. Mm hmm And the light isn't right that close up on it. The light's about ten feet over it, so it's, it's a little misleading by the angle. So I'd say on the whole, the the EOS R and this lens, the the f two point eight seventy to two hundred IS two, performs really well. Um, it's it's 
not it's sensitive but it's not sensitive to the point that it blows everything out and it has very quick focus um, let me see if you can hear it now if I turn it on let me take the uh, lens cap off let's see no I don't think we're picking that up can you hear the beep it's right by my mic well, I think we're picking up the the beep, but so every time I'm moving, it's I got a couple of shots, but it it's got a good focus on this. So mm -hmm. uh, I'd say it's no slower than most of the other lenses out there, including some of the Micro Four Thirds ones we have. It's it's pretty quick um, for for this size lens, which is which is big. So I'd say on the whole, this is. A nice, kind of well-purposed, huge lens. Yeah, although it's not—it's not that big, isn't it? Smaller than the previous? I, I don't. I think it's a little smaller than the original one. Yeah, and it's definitely smaller than some of their bigger ones. Um, but on the whole, I'd I mean, say as we had it on the camera there, you know, a lot of the size was just the lens hood. You can see it's quite yeah, a bit so smaller. Yeah, so here without the lens hood, not that bad. Yeah. Lens hood adds that much more. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty noticeable. I mean, it's not it's not going to be a tiny lens. Obviously, being a full frame uh, telephoto, now, we have not yet hooked this into a monopod or, monopod or tripod. But this doesn't go that deep. It looks like it goes in like maybe a quarter of an inch. So I'm curious how well that's going to hold. This is not light, but we'll see. We're going to give that a shot later. So anyway, there you go. This is the. Um, Again, the 7200 millimeter Canon f 2.8, so it's very bright for this size lens, and it's 2.8 all, all the way across from beginning to end. Uh, motor is a USM motor, ultrasonic motor. It's quiet. Uh, really don't hear it too much. You and don't get the thing that you sometimes get with Canon le lenses where, where there's the... Uh, chicka 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 chicka. No, you don't. It's pretty quiet. Yeah. Some of the newer lenses are quieter, like the STM lenses are quieter. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, now, we've had the EOS R in-house for about three weeks, maybe. F I don't think it's been quite a month yet, but close. Yeah. And, and it's been good. I mean, besides, I, I think with a telephoto lens, you're not going to be using the camera's mic because you're not going to pick up anything. No, no, it's too far from it, probably. <clears throat> but because this has about a 3.8 foot focus need. And so... You're not going to do it any closer than yeah, 3.8 uh, feet. 1.2 meters. And yep. you can actually set the uh, minimum fo focus mm -hmm. distance. It has two settings. There's yep. 1.2 meters and 2.4 meters. So yep. if you if you want to stop it from focusing on things that are too close, you can actually set that if you need to. Yep. So you have options. Anyway, well, that's it. Harold, any closing comments? Well, I think I'll just say this. Stay tuned because uh, next week sometime probably we'll bring in the um, Tamron 7200 uh, EF mount lens and we'll, we'll, put a, we'll do a little head-to-head -head with these. Yeah, both are excellent lenses. And I, I know in many reviews the Tamron wins. So it should be interesting to see what the differences are. The Tamron is smaller by probably maybe two inches, two or three inches. It's smaller, but then they're very good at that. They actually made it really small and efficient. It doesn't weigh as much as this either. Yeah, um, well, we'll put them side by yeah. side so you can <coughs> kind of see. So it should be fun. Both both great lenses. Tamron makes one of the best 24 to 70 lenses. I had that one on a, on a Nikon. They sell it for this one too, and maybe getting it one of these days. That was a great lens it is sharp beautiful i took a lot of shots in new york with it with architecture and i was just blown away by the quality of the lines and textures and it could get i was i was two blocks away from some of these buildings and you could see the the lines on the bricks it was it was amazing uh, and sharp very clean corners very very good lens so that's it for today it's thanksgiving tomorrow we hope all of you have a wonderful thanksgiving and if you don't think you have a lot to be thankful of, think again. No matter how bad things are, whether your house has been hit by fires, we're in fire zones all, all over here. And we were lucky we're in Camarillo because only parts of Camarillo got even touched near the fires. The rest is pretty much in a safe zone. 
uh, not in canyons, but uh, there's always a lot to be thankful for. No matter what's going on in your life, look beyond your current situation. No matter whether it's good, bad, and different, there's always good. You just have to find it sometimes. Have a great Thanksgiving. Be thankful. We're thankful for Thanksgiving and, and all the people we work with and the, and the shows we do and the guests we have and everything else. And the gear. We love the gear, too. We're thankful for gear. Um, we'll see you next week on Tech Town Over. Have a good one, everyone. Thank Bye, you Harold. for watching, everyone.